welcome to the awesome Maley Show. <laughs> I said I wanted to do the Ellen Show, but maybe she can book me after dancing with the star. <laughs> But I still want to do the Ellen show. <laughs> Just call my peeps. <laughs> we have a great show today. We're going to talk about how to be a self-advocate. What does it mean to be a self-advocate? I guess it's going to tell us. Please welcome Kaylin Cole. Welcome to the show, Kaylin. Mary, it's such a pleasure to be on your show. Let's get to the chase. What does it mean to be a self-advocate? What is self-advocacy? So let's break up that phrase. So you have the word self and you have the word advocacy. So self is you, yourself, inside, your body, your mind, your spirit, how you think, your identifier. Then there's the word advocacy, which is defined as the act of supporting a cause or a specific proposal. In our movement, and when I refer to the word our, I'm talking about people with disabilities. Self-advocacy is literally the civil rights movement for people with intellectual disabilities, cognitive disabilities, and developmental disabilities, and basically all people with disabilities. It's about having the right to making your own decision without having undue stress or control by other people. Who should be a self-advocate? Everyone can be a self-advocate, Mary, and everyone should be a self-advocate. Why is it important to be a self-advocate? Self-advocacy is so important because everyone should have the right and the access to the skills that they need so that they can make their own independent decisions about what affects their own life. Historically, people with disabilities have been powerless, they've been isolated, they've been segregated, and they have been denied their basic human rights. They have been discriminated against literally in every place and in every way. When is it important to be a self-advocate? There are so many situations where self-advocacy is important for people with disabilities. Where you wish to live, your educational process, your IEP, which is your individualized education program, right? Your voting rights, when you go to the doctor's office and maybe the doctor, he or she, is not listening to what you want about yourself. There's going to be times when you are going to be your best self-advocate when you are trying to get a job or perhaps when you are trying to get some time off from your work to go to an appointment. And then there's going to be times when you're going to be the best self-advocate when someone's bullying you and the list goes on and on and on and on. So how should we start? What should our first step be? It is all about getting those skills. There are many organizations that you can reach out to that can give you those skills. So the first one I would recommend is the SABE organization, which is, you can look at them up on their website, is www.sabeusa.org. Now SABE stands for Self Advocates Becoming Empowered. That's the first organization. Then you also have NICL which stands for the National Center on Independent Living. And their website is www.ncil.org. And any one of those organizations, they also have local chapters. So when you reach out to the national organization, you can get information about where the local chapter is in your area to get these levels of empowerment. Within all of these organizations, you can find resources about how to speak up for yourself, finding out what your rights and your responsibilities are, 
problem solving. You can find information about problem solving and most importantly, learning about what self-determination is. If you had one piece of advice for an advocate, what would it be? You know, my one piece of advice would be to remind you and to keep reminding you that you have the power to direct your own life. Thank you for talking to us today. It's my pleasure. Kaylin Cole, everybody. We're out of time at the Awesome Mary Show. We'll see you soon.